Hi everyone, uh, good morning. Thought we'd have a change of scenery. <laughs> and uh, hope you had a good day yesterday. It was great to be able to worship God together, weren't it? And uh, what a great message from Pastor Phil. And I trust that uh, you're all doing well, keeping safe. And uh, it's good to see all the messages that are coming through on the different uh, WhatsApp groups. So let's keep encouraging each other in God, shall we? Um, I want to share just a few thoughts with you again this morning. And, uh, you know, have you ever got to a road junction? Well, you will have done, won't you? But have you ever got to a road junction and uh, you know which way you want to go? And there's a road sign there saying this way, you know, to wherever it is you want to go. But, but you sit there and you see a different sign and you think, hmm. I think I know a quicker way and so uh, you decide to go down the other road and um, you know you say to your passenger in your car don't worry don't worry this is a shortcut I know where I'm going and uh, and yes I know <laughs> uh, well I know me anyway I have done that and uh, I've got lost I thought I knew the way uh, I'd seen the signpost and uh, I thought, no, no, there's a better way than this. I know a better way, you know. Or, of course, now we've got sat-navs. We just put the sat-nav on, don't we? And we follow blindly the sat-nav. Because the sat-nav's always going to take us to the right place, isn't it? Uh-uh, not true. Only last week we were following our sat-navs in the car to a particular place. And we turned down this road and... Alice and myself looked at each other and we said, it's not down here. But we followed the sat-nav. And you know what? It was not down there. The sat-nav was wrong. And, uh, and sometimes we just blindly follow something because we think it's right. And we think it's the right way. You know, Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right unto a man. But its end is the way of death. Wow, that's a bit of a harsh uh, word, isn't it? You know, and it's. Uh, but of course, it's spiritual death, isn't it? Spiritual death that, that it's talking about as well. Now, Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When he said those words, it was on the night of the Passover, just before he was to be crucified on the cross. And he'd broken bread with his disciples, and he'd sat down, and then he started to chat to them. And it's probably one of the longest discourses that we have in the whole of the Bible, where Jesus sits with his disciples, and he just shares his heart with them. Just the night before. And in there he says these words, I am the way, the truth and the life. You know, the world says lots of things, doesn't it? In fact, there are no absolutes anymore in the world. Uh, anybody can do anything they want, really, and, uh, you know, nobody challenges them. Political correct correctness says we, we can't challenge people because that's right for them. <laughs> and everybody chooses their own way. But where is that way leading them? Where is it leading them? I mean, every road leads to God, doesn't it? I hear people say. Well, the truth is, no, it doesn't. Not every road leads to God. In fact, there's only one way leads to God because the next bit of that verse says this. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. You see, Jesus was saying there's only one way. And I don't know where you are listening to this in the world today, 
on the what times. And, uh, but I felt really compelled by God the Holy Spirit to share this word. Um, there were many other things I could have said today, but I really felt compelled to share this word for somebody today because Jesus says he is the way, the truth and the life. You see, when Jesus said that to his disciples, he, he says, I am the way. He was saying two very, very important things. First of all, he said, I am. In these two words, he is making a statement to his disciples and, of course, us. And it was all centered around what God had said to Moses back in the book of Exodus. In fact, Exodus 3, verse 14, it says, when Moses is saying to God, who shall I say has sent me to the Israelites? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am sent me to you. Then it goes on in verse 15, it says, this is my name forever. And this is how I am to be remembered in every generation. Jesus was saying he was God incarnate. God in flesh. The self-existent one. And then he said, it is I who am saying this to you. I am the self-existent one is the way. He didn't say a way. He said very clearly, the way. No one comes to the Father but through me, through him. He previously said to his disciples, don't you follow me? And they left everything that they had, the word of God says, to follow him. And so they followed him. The world we live in nowadays is following their own way. Without God, putting their trust in their own understanding, putting their trust in wealth and money. In fact, the Word of God says that you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and you can't serve mammon. And that word mammon in the original word does not only mean wealth, but it is actually a Syrian deity, a false god. A god who promises something and delivers very little. In fact, wealth and money never promises you happiness. And as we've seen over the years, many people that have had lots of money don't find happiness. It doesn't guarantee them success. It doesn't guarantee them a marriage. It doesn't bring happiness. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Man is looking for a signpost the way <laughs> you know but they decided to go their own way or listen to the sat nav and been like sheep and followed the bleating sheep in front of them straight over a cliff the early church was called the people of the way why because they had found the way well they hadn't found a way they had found the way and the way had nothing to do with a, a journey the way had everything to do with a person Jesus the word of God says this it says what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and, let, and yet loses his soul hmm. you know I remember some years ago when we lived in Zimbabwe we uh, we were the people that we were working with to put on a function in uh, South Africa. And the only way you could come to this function, it was in a five-star hotel, was you had to invite somebody who was a non-Christian. And uh, there was a guest speaker uh, who had come to speak, uh, Bob Edmonds. And uh, at the time, Bob was very... What, very wealthy, still is. Um, and the people that had come to listen to him came to listen because of what, I guess, the wealth he had. <laughs> a 
But we put out a menu that night, and on the bottom of the menu it says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yeah, loses his soul? And Bob shared his testimony. Uh, so I was a young man, he had uh, twice in a youth meeting felt God say to him, give me everything you've got in your pocket. And so Bob put that in the offering, in obedience to God, which meant he got to walk several miles home that night. But he did it, and he tells his testimony how he believes that, that God uh, honoured him all the way through his life, from a, from a very lowly start in life, all the way through. And that night, 70 people gave their lives to the Lord, because actually, <laughs> as much, as much wealth as they got, and lots of them were CEOs of, of organisations and in the government in South Africa, 70 people that night made a decision for Christ. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? You know, Jesus is the way. Will you follow him? For those of us who know him, let's keep our eyes upon Jesus. He will light our way in this darkness. In fact, don't hide your light the word of God says, but let it shine. You carry God in you to the world around you. Be bold and courageous because God is with you. Many people are looking where to turn to help them find Jesus. Ask them if they would like you to pray with them. I think you'll be surprised how many people will say please. Do you remember that old song? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Do you remember it? <laughs> well, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Be a lighthouse to guide people to the way.